651. And <clears throat> but man, I've lived here, you know, grew up here. My brother managed a ranch out here for 25 years and has lived here for nearly 35 years himself. He's never seen anything like it. Although his son, my nephew John, told me one time something was said. And he said, well, you know, so me and my buddy were out there in the canyon. This is south of town, about six or eight miles. He said, there was something that flew up over the hill out there, and it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like anything they'd ever seen before. You know, we have uh, we have um, golden eagles out here. You almost never see one. You'll almost never see it. But they are. I've seen one. They are out here. Uh, <clears throat> there are pterodactyl sightings. But, you know, did he see that, or was it this crazy mothman thing? Uh I don't know. That's why I started Project 651. And Project 651 is, I'm, I'm collecting all these stories, and man, there's a lot of them, <clears throat> that all of them down this little 62-mile-long strip of uh, farm road that goes, goes right through Crosbyton, goes into one, comes out of one canyon and goes into another, and across a lot of just farmland. But so much stuff has happened there. That's where these, this lady hit one or two of these things twice and the other and and right here around you know within a block or two of 651 is where these things are occurring that is so and, interesting so i uh i've started uh looking into I, yeah i don't know much about ley lines or portals i'm, I'm resisting the whole idea of portals but uh, more and more People are talking, or they're explaining the disappearance of, of uh, something like Bigfoot. They're saying, no, they appear and disappear. I go, well, I don't know, man. I'm not saying you're lying, but I don't see how something physical can disappear. They said, well, they're going into a portal. And uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't understand it. <clears throat> it had to be something I could substantiate in the Bible, or I, I wouldn't believe it. Well, but, you, uh, you know... It, it's strange. How far are you from Dallas? I'm about four and a half hours. Okay, it, more or less west. Okay, now I I had a trucker who wants to come on, but he doesn't want to come on because he's scared to. Uh, he claim I guess there's if you go through Dallas and you head east, you go into a couple a desert or something. That's what he claims. Uh, and what he said he was driving you know long haul at night, late at night, early morning I should say. And it was still dark out, and he just looked out his cab window, and he saw like what he described a jeeper creeper following him, right next to him, looking at him, you know, in through the window, and then it just took off. And he said that uh, that was one of his last times doing a long haul, late at night doing you know runs. It, it scared him so bad. He said that in all wow. his years in trucking, he never saw anything paranormal anything strange like that but he said this thing was human size and it and again it wasn't even flapping his wings it was supposedly just you know it had wings but it was just right there and he said he was cruising the speed limit and right there next to, to him was this well you know mothman or whatever well i don't doubt that you know there was i thought you're going to tell a story about this fellow about a year and a half ago <clears throat> a trucker driving I believe it was east on I-30 going through Dallas. And I took it to be somewhere on the edge of Dallas out there, kind of get into farm country. But he said he witnessed a, a pterodactyl for maybe 10 seconds flying across his viewing plane. <clears throat> I think he was flying south. He was so excited. He, I don't know if he pulled over or called somebody right then, but he called uh, Dr. Ken Hoven over at... Uh, his dinosaur land there in Alabama, I think, and told him the story. And Kent called me and said, "Hey, Joe, here's his story." So, uh, I don't know if this this other trucker on I thirty, maybe he saw a mothman, but but he thought it was a pterodactyl. Uh, pterodactyls can soar; they they can soar a long ways without moving the wings. They're kind of like a, you know, like a, a vulture. They catch the wind; they don't have to flap their wings much. But that's not what this trucker is saying. This thing was following him along at 60 miles an hour. That's what these guys in this pickup at, at uh, sundown were saying. So, man, I, I you know, um, again, 
maybe that guy was mistaken, but I really doubt it. I think he probably, that's what he saw. You know, he's a trucker. He's never done this before. Why should he make anything up? That's yeah. interesting. Now, James, you, yeah. got, you got some questions, James? Yeah, I do. Uh, I just also wanted to, to um, I got a report here actually from San Antonio, Texas, from February of this year. And it's about a pterodactyl also in it. It go, It's just a short little um, report here. But the guy's from San Antonio, Texas, and he, he's from the Windcrest area. And he goes, I saw this. Um, it looked like a creature, a pterodactyl. And it had a dark, leathery uh, skin. It was uh, in February. Matter of fact, it was on Valentine's Day. And it flew really close to me. I got paranoid, and I drove back to the area where I seen it. And there was a pond that had ducks, and the ducks were, like, hiding in the bushes. And when they see me pull up with my uh, light high beams on, they came running to the light. Now, I know what I saw, and that was no regular bird or an owl because I was looking, and I've never seen anything like that. Now, that was from San Antonio in February. Just Wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Well, now, i got to ask yeah. you, um, Joe, do you think a lot of these sightings that people are say, saying they see uh, Thunderbird, do you think those could be pterodactyl sightings? It might be, but I think the Thunderbird is actually this uh, giant bird that uh, kind of has an eagle head, but he's shaped like a giant crow. I think those are, are giant birds with feathers. And uh, there's a there was an Indian fellow who was uh, ex-military, had a uh, 16 or 8 millimeter camera back maybe 30, 40 years ago. Some river up in um, Ohio, I don't know where, somewhere up there, he was just out. I don't know if he, why he had his movie camera with him, but he was going along there to his boat and up this tree way up there, maybe 75 feet up, these two giant birds. And he didn't say pterodactyl, they're birds. And he started filming. He's got about four or five seconds of film of this thing. One of them flies off and the other one stays there. And I guess he flies off. But those were what they describe uh, in Alaska as flying along as big as a Cessna. They've seen one of them flying along, I guess, in an airplane. Uh, there was a place, I believe, in Minnesota maybe 50 years ago. Some mother is out in the yard. I believe she's hanging out the laundry. And her 10-year-old son's playing out there. And this thing swoops down and grabs him and oh takes off with him. And the mother runs over, grabs the boy, and pulls him away from it. And I think that was one of these giant, giant uh, feathered bird things that the Indians used to talk about as being Thunderbirds. And I think the reason they call them Thunderbirds is like um, our, in our canyon down here in, in August, you know, when it's really hot and humid, uh, <clears throat> these old storms will blow in out of the north, uh, which don't always turn into anything, but they look bad. The clouds are green and kind of blacks looking. And they'll, they'll, they'll start moving south, southeast. And if you're out in the canyon, you're, here comes all these buzzards that have been somewhere else. And they get to their tree, uh, maybe a mile from where we were, and they land in that tree, and there they sit. And it starts thundering and lightning. And it sounds to me like these giant birds... The same thing would happen. You have a big storm come up, so the birds don't want to get struck by lightning or get hailed on. So they come in and land in wherever they stay, in the caves or on the big trees. <clears throat> and so they're called thunderbirds because they, they come in advance of the thunder. But pterodactyls, uh, all the sightings I've heard about of those, they don't seem to have anything to do with storms. They're just out there middle of the day, in the afternoon, usually, I guess, in the evening, maybe at uh uh, they're more or less nocturnal, as far as we can tell. And Mothman, so far, I think all the sightings, at least around here, are in the the evening or at night. So <clears throat> there's a pattern there. But I think there's two different things, Thunderbird and Pterodactyls and this Mothman. Those are two different things, as far as I can tell. Okay. Hey, i got to ask you another question. Have you ever seen in person, some of that pottery from South America that depicts the natives fighting with dinosaurs, or have you ever uh, talked or interviewed any of the natives about that pottery? Well, I've seen a lot of that pottery, and uh, 
I've molded, I've seen several of the what are called Ica stones by the Ica people, I-C-A, from Ica, Peru, down there along the coast. <clears throat> uh, there's a museum down there that's collected some, uh, it's got at least, I believe, 11,000 of these stones. Most of them are andesite, which is a real heavy stone with a sort of soft surface that you can carve with a, a sharp instrument of some sort. And this guy has collected 10,000 of these things. And there's another collection that's just as large. Uh, and they own these stones. They're, most of them are black. And the engraving part is the color of the stone, a light gray. Uh, and on there is all kinds of strange, weird stuff, uh, operations of people. They're, op- they're operating on somebody on their stomach or whatever. Uh, there's all kinds of depictions of dinosaurs and, you know, stuff we recognize as being, yeah, that is a sauropod. That's a, that's an Alice or a T-Rex or something. And they're there by the hundreds, if not thousands. So some of my friends purchased some of those, those, uh, those stones and I made molds of them. So I'm pretty familiar with them. And first, first thing is, Everybody says, well, they're, they're, they're fakes because man and dinosaur didn't live together. Well, you know, that's just an assumption. That does, that's not science. You can't say, well, there was never any such thing as a so-and-so. Well, that, that's not proof. That's just your opinion, which is not, not founded. So, okay, let's assume that man and dinosaur did live together. <clears throat> it had to be in the last few thousand years because these stones, we know they're, they're about maybe... 800 to 1,000, 1,200 years old when these things are made. <clears throat> now, if they're fakes, which that's the next question, well, they have to be fakes because man and dinosaur didn't live together. Well, you know, okay, who created them? Well, these four people did. Really? They made 40,000 of these stones, and we, that's ones we know about. They So these guys are really super busy, and they did it all with a hacksaw blade. Yeah, yeah, all the hacksaw blade. <clears throat> well... Uh, I have to know some of those people that allegedly made them, and, and I've bought some of their fakes, because they do make fakes. Uh, <clears throat> back in 73 or something, uh, Dr. Cabrera had this museum of the uh, all these stones over there and was getting pretty famous, you know, a lot of people coming in, and, uh, and he was supposedly, these uh, stones are being found, uh, by the locals when they were d- either digging up the graves and taking them out of the graves or they washed out in a big flood. I think back in 1960, there was a giant, huge flood, washed out a big graveyard, supposedly, and they were picking these stones up and they'd take them into Cabrera and trade it to him for uh, medical attention. He was a doctor. So, uh, <clears throat> but if you're digging up the graves, that's illegal, although it's done all the time. So the federales came in and, and uh, told this couple, these two people that actually weren't married, they were two different families, and accused them of uh, robbing graves. They said, oh, no, 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 because if, you go, if, if you're guilty of that, you're going to go to a, a Peruvian prison. If you've got eight kids at home, you don't want to go to prison. So no. they said, oh, no, no, we make all of them. We'll show you. So they, they showed them how they did it. They, uh, you could carve andesite with a hacksaw blade, and that kept them from going to jail. So, <clears throat> okay, that's one thing. Uh, it still doesn't address the idea of how many of those things exist that we know exist <clears throat> in two different collections that, that, we, that we're aware of. Hey, but, Joe, we got to take a break, yeah. buddy. Hold on. I was driving through a monument. All the stars started in sight Trying to find a wide spot To rest my soul for the night The moon was full and glowing Illuminating the desert floor I saw rocks and sand Driver 